Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault from Our Mountains and today I'm going to show you what's new in version 5.0 of the Corgi Engine. This new major version comes with a lot of new stuff, enhancements to existing stuff and of course bug fixes of all the known uh, bugs to date. And it focuses mostly on creating new enemies, a new advanced AI system and new weapons as well. And really all that in combination. Right now I'm in the new Retro AI demo scene and it's packed full of new enemies and like this guy, you know, uh, that yellow guy, when I get too close to him, he gets angry and he hits me with his sword and I'm just gonna kill him. Above we have a new enemy that will shoot at you and aim his gun in your direction if you're close enough, so it's quite hard to get rid of him. and. Uh, to show you that it's quite simple to create them. There's also an example of that same yellow guy from before, but now he doesn't have a sword anymore. He has a gun and he's quite angry. You can, using that new advanced AI system, which will be the subject of a different separate tutorial, uh, you can create all sorts of patterns and decisions. So uh, for example, that guy above me on the gray platforms, he will just walk for a certain time and then stop and jump while uh, this guy on the floor here, he walks and uh, repeatedly after a certain time will jump, which will allow him sometimes to get uh, on different ground. That guy on the red platform above me, uh, he'll have um, an attack on sight uh, feature, which will allow me to lure him into a trap like that. The ghost we see above, uh, just imitates the old uh, Mario games behavior of flying and if I get too close to him he will try to track me well, like that and I can just uh, make him stop by looking him in the eye or getting far away like that and here we have the final boss of the Corgi engine it's a character actually made of three different characters so we have the body and uh, the two separate guns, they all have different behaviors, like uh, the, the gun closest to me, and I'm dead. But uh, I'm just gonna go back and try to have my revenge. And so, yeah, the, the gun closest to me will change projectile types uh, if I get his health low enough. So right now it's shooting these tiny bubbles but if I hurt it a bit more it will switch to these big yellow uh, projectiles and I just have to kill it and get rid of the other gun and now it doesn't have a gun anymore so it's just gonna try to uh, run at me and if I get it to well a low enough health and I just have to spam missiles until I get rid of it. So I'm now gonna deep dive into the new stuff and show you exactly how the new features work. Uh, let's start with the combo system. So now you can create weapons like this retro combo sword that chain attacks and it's extremely easy to do. You can even mix melee attacks with projectile weapons. Uh, you can create some sort of uh, projectile weapon that would switch to different modes if the player shoots repeatedly. Uh, that kind of stuff, it's really up to you. I'm gonna select uh, the prefab in question and show you how it works. You'll see it's super simple. So I have selected here my retro combo sword and as you can see it has a melee weapon component here just like it was before. Uh, complete with a few new uh, upgrades from this version but it also has another one and it also has another one and if I just close this you'll see that it comes with a combo weapon script and this one just specifies you know uh, if the combo can be dropped which means that if you exceed this delay of 0.5 seconds after the weapon has been used, the current weapon in the list. Um, well, if you spend more than 0.5 seconds hitting the 
attack button, then you'll go back to the initial attack. And I'm just gonna go and grab my sword. So I do a first attack, a second attack, and if I wait too long, I go back to my first attack. And the way it works is it automatically grabs the list of weapons, so you don't even have to fill this. And each weapon will uh, do its own thing. So for example, this one will have a time between uses of 0.3, which will allow its um, damage area to apply damage. And it, you can see it's active for 0.2 seconds. So after uh, the attack has started, you get this damage. And after 0.3, it's gonna switch if you press to this new weapon here, which does something else. And as you can see, each of them has a separate uh, animation parameters list, which allows me to say, okay, when this one starts, you know, send the start animation parameter sword one. And when this one starts, sword two, etc. And I could go much more deeper by having more animations even per attack uh, to have you know anything really that you want with all these parameters you can do crazy stuff and this all goes into my retro corgi animator and the animator looks like this i need to select the model and so as you can see i have here my melee walk run etc animations and at the end I, I have my sword one sword two sword three animations and when sword one is true it will play the sword one animation of course it's really simple nothing really new uh, in terms of setup it's just a combination of things you probably already know by this point and if you don't i encourage you to check out the weapons documentation it covers all that in more details while we're on the subject of weapons, I'm gonna show you a few of the new things that come especially for projectile weapons. So I'm gonna select my retro machine gun here, um, prefab, and it's gonna be dropped by this item picker that you can see in the scene. So what's new for projectile weapons? Well, uh, for starters, you can now define uh, the number of projectiles per shot that you get. So I'm gonna change that to three, for example. And here you can set the spread. So the spread is a rotation, random rotation angle uh, on the X, Y, or Z axis. So right now there's a 10 degrees angle of random spread. I'm gonna add that to 20. And I, I'm actually gonna set the amount of projectiles to 10 so we actually see the difference. I'm gonna press play, I'm gonna grab my um, machine gun and I'm gonna shoot and as you can see every time I shoot I get a lot of projectiles in random spread if I want to go for something like uh, more of a retro shooter I can also say uh, that I don't want a random spread I just want regular spread equal uh, every time and it's gonna just uh, arrange the projectiles so that they do these nice patterns like that and I can then you know say okay maybe I want a 60 and 25 projectiles per shot and that gives me this very nice result um, you might notice the freeze frames every time I hit enemies this is not a performance issue, I reassure you, it's like by design because you can now on each projectile, so for example on the retro machine gun bullet here, you can define a freeze frame on hit. Uh, this is something that I really love in games, uh, great visual feedback, it's used a lot in Street Fighter games for example, and it will freeze the game for a small duration, usually one or two frames, but you can really up that. Uh, so I'm going to put it at 0.2, for example, so you can actually see the difference. And I'm going to select my gun. And as you can see, every time I hit, the screen freezes. So I wouldn't recommend 0.2, except maybe on your biggest hit, but uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 is usually 
uh, a nice sort of touch that you can add to your games to make them feel really good. Some other stuff that you can define uh, on the weapons now is the screen shake. Uh, as you can see, when I when I shoot when, with the machine gun, the screen will shake. It will also flash. Uh, again, great visual feedback for your games. Uh, you can define here in the projectile weapon. Well, actually, the weapon script. You can define the screen shake, the screen shake parameters. Uh, look at the documentation, but it basically defines the duration, uh, intensity, and frequency of the shake, and also the flash. And if I play the game again, grab my machine gun. When I shoot, you can see that the screen shakes. So uh, right now I'm not shooting and now it shakes. And it also flashes to white lightly. Uh, all that is easy to customize. So the shake can be, can be set here. And for the screen flash, it will impact something called the MM flash uh, component, which is basically uh, a component that will uh, get that flash event from any source and turn this image to active, you know, for a frame. And you can, of course, change that to any other type of color. So, for example, if I change it to red and maybe make it a bit more visible in terms of alpha, oh, I'm changing it on a different screen, but uh, basically I'm changing the color from white to red and upping the alpha. And if I now press play, you'll see that every time I shoot, it flashes to red. Might not be what you want, but you can also use uh, this kind of events to trigger a hurt feedback. For example, when you get hit, you want the screen to go red. And one last thing you can check on your weapons is the ability to prevent all movement while attacking. So I'm gonna check this checkbox and I'm gonna turn off my weapon aim script uh, because uh, right now it's bound to my primary movement. Or I can also uh, select that and switch that to maybe secondary movement. What this will do, uh, the checkbox I checked at the beginning, is that I can now shoot and I'm pressing left right now and my character doesn't flip anymore and uh, it doesn't move anymore until I release the hit button. This is nice for projectile weapons, can also be useful for melee weapons uh, to avoid your character or AI characters to move while attacking. Some other visual feedback improvements. Uh, I've created a new health bar class that is much more powerful than the previous one. So um, if I shoot at this guy, you'll see that the flash bar, the health bar flashes and changes color. Well, this guy didn't have enough health, so I'm just gonna go and try to hit the boss over there. So this guy, he does have a lot of health and I'm gonna hide. And as you can see, when I hit one of his guns, the health bar will flash to white and then slowly change color. And now it's in the red, you know, and it's the same for all these health bars. And there's also a delayed health bar. Uh, when he loses some health, you can see that there's a red bar that follows the main one. And that shows you, you know, or shows the player uh, that really some impact has happened and the health has gone from here to here. And that's, that's something really nice that I really encourage you to add to your games especially as the Corgi engine makes that super simple to do. So if I select one of his guns, you'll see that he has a MM as bar component on it, which is just an upgraded version of the previously existing one. You can use it using a prefab or you can go for a drone version. If you go for a drone version, you'll get the result that you just saw, but you can customize the size, all the colors of all the bars involved and the background and the padding and everything. You can define the delay that will be applied between the two bars on what layer it's going to be. All that is pretty much uh, self-explanatory and it's some really nice stuff that will add a lot to your game. The last thing I wanted to show you in this scene are the new gizmos I added to the, the engine. 
So one of them is the red, I'm gonna pause the game. Uh, one of them is the red semi-transparent thing you can see here. It shows the damage zones, so the damage on touch areas. Um, it goes for all characters, uh, projectiles, but also melee weapons as well. So for example, if I get close to this enemy, you'll see that he gets angry and then his area of attack shows on screen. Uh, and that's pretty useful when you're working on melee weapons and combo weapons, for example. So right now I have my Corgi equipped with a retro combo sword, which comes with three different areas of damage. And if I use my sword, you see that they all light up in sequence, which is super nice when you're uh, maybe aligning your areas of damage with your animation and that kind of stuff. Um, other gizmos, I tried to standardize them because I've added a lot over the years and I wanted them to have some meaning. So now everything that will be collision based like raycast, you'll see that there are different shades of blue. Uh, vision is mostly yellow, damage zones that, as we've seen are red and uh, everything that is like obstacle detection is mostly gray or blackish and that should give you uh, a better understanding of how all that works and right now we're looking at the cone of it well the rectangle of vision of this little guy and if i come into i'm gonna play on another screen but yeah if i come into his field of view you'll see that he comes at me and again all these gizmos are here to help you during your level design and character setup uh, to get faster and better results. I'm gonna switch to a different scene, the retro copter scene, to show you one of the new abilities included in this new version of the Corgi engine. So now I'm playing as uh, the Corgi helicopter, which is a flying version of uh, a character. So this one is always flying. As you can see, I can combine that with other abilities such as uh, the handling of a weapon or the aiming of a weapon. You could also combine that with a dash or anything. Um, the component is quite simple. It's called character fly. You put it on the character, just like any ability. Uh, here you'll be able to define the speed at which the character flies. So right now I'm flying super fast. You could also have your character be always flying or not. So you could have a regular walking, running character, which at the press of a button will start to fly and be able to move using the primary movement. So it's quite fun and really something that was requested a lot by pretty much everyone. Switching to another scene, I'm gonna show you uh, while we're on the subject of flight, one of the new abilities, which is called uh, character glide. It's heavily inspired by something you may have seen in old Aladdin games, for example. I was a big fan of those. And uh, so the way it works is once you've exhausted all your jumps, it resorts to using a magical leaf or whatever that is, and it glides. And it's quite simple to use. Um, if you select your character, you will have a character glide ability here and uh, it's quite simple. You can decide whether or not you want to glide only if there are no jumps left. You can set a separate glide button. Right now I've bound it to the jump button for convenience and because that's how it was done in the games I loved, but you could have a separate button for that. And here you can define a vertical force that will be applied. So minus 0.1 will give you that result, but uh, you could change it to 0.5 maybe and if I jump again you'll see that I'm now uh, slowing the fall a bit differently uh, if I change it to 1 I'm almost going up now so it's something you could implement if that suits your gameplay and if you want to change um, what button triggers the glide it's quite simple you go to the project settings and somewhere in there you'll find the player one glide so you can see it's space right now which is also the jump button but you could change it to uh, 
you know, uh, whatever, I maybe, and it would work. I have two last features to show you, and, and both of them can be demonstrated in this retro adventure demo scene. So the first one is the magic one-up mushroom picker thing. Uh, as you can see, I only have three lives left, and below me is a tiny mushroom that goes, you know, about uh, doing his thing. And if I grab the mushroom, bam, I have tons of new lives. Of course, you can customize how many lives you want added. So uh, right now I'm adding one life, but also eight empty containers that I asked the thing to fill, but I can also make it much more, make it much more simpler. And uh, by saying, okay, this will just, well, this will give me one more life. The other thing I wanted to show you is the fact that you can now swim. And uh, you could actually swim in previous versions of the Korgi engine, but it didn't have its own ability and uh, animations. So now you get a, a new state, a movement state, you get a new animation. So uh, it's maybe hard to see, but the tiny Korgi is flapping its little legs and arms to get out of the water. And you can define all sorts of things. I'm just gonna select my character here and show you how it works. So somewhere in this, I have a character swim ability and from its inspector, you can define uh, the height of the swim. So how high you swim every time you press uh, the swim button. Right now it's the space button, but you can set it differently just like for the guide, uh, the duration of the animation that you want and you can have specific entry and exit water effects and also specify the force that you want applied every time you exit the water. You can also see right here that uh, right now I'm in the water using this uh, read-only parameter and when I exit the water, it goes back to force. That's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to show you today and it covers, I guess, most of the new features and enhancements that come with version 5 of the Korgi engine. I'm going to do a dedicated tutorial to show how the advanced AI system and uh, yeah, if you're interested, be sure to check it out. I'll see you next time. Bye.